Wake up, everybody. It's the start of a brand new week. Happy Monday, and welcome to Houston Life. Courtney, I mostly meant that for you. I know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm having a rough time on this Monday. Yesterday, I think because that storm blew through, I mean, literally blew through. Yeah. Like, almost blew Houston over. Um, I think maybe that's why you're feeling a little draggy today. I don't know. I don't know. I need something to, to pick me up. But you had a good weekend, right? We had a great weekend. We were dog-sitting uh, our friend's boxer, and, uh, you know, he slept next to the bed, um, but by morning, he was definitely up in the beds. I'm not sure how that happened, but eventually I was like, don't even try. If he wants to cuddle with us, that's, that's a fine. good uncle. That's good. That doesn't happen at parents' <laughs> houses, you know? The uncles and the grandparents are the ones that. I mean, then the rules so a little sweet, bit. They just want to be close to us. By the way, little text, uh, in case you're wondering, he is here. He was here in the studio somewhere. Yeah, he's he living his best life. Living his best life. He's doing a little Easter basket photo shoot this morning. So just next cute. Door. So don't worry. Um, we'll so, you know, we had a good, good weekend as well. And of course, I was back on the school auction train. I believe this was the last stop. This one, so uh, Garden Oaks uh, uh, Montessori School. Look at you. So it was a, you know, peace, love, and Montessori um, over there at the Again. And you and didn't then, even have to dress up in a costume. You just no, wore your I just regular wore my clothing. regular clothing. And then yesterday was a surprise party for my pretty friend Kathleen in the middle there in the green shirt. Hi, Kathleen. Um, I know she's her. in the 40 Club. So uh, it was a surprise party yesterday, and it was so awesome. The weather stayed clear for her party, and that was at Harold's in the Heights on 19th Street. So it was such a great evening. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And uh, the storm finally had, like, finished up by the time oh, the party Oh, yeah, happened. not a problem, because it was, you know, early evening. It was perfect. It's yeah. so tough to plan any event. I mean, not just in the spring, but don't you guys feel like year-round in Houston, you never quite know what the weather is going to be like we really lucked out because yeah. on Saturday we had this spring wine fest at Brenner's. Guys, so fantastic. Have you been to this before? It is so amazingly cool. There are all these vendors serving, you know, samples from their restaurants, Brenner's included, by the way. And, uh, oh, we had some great sushi from Willie G's and there's some great tacos from Brenner's. But it's this fun outdoor event. Wine is also <laughs> included, of course. It's called the Wine Fest. And uh, we had such a lovely time there. And a lot of you who watch Houston Life, you stopped me to say hello. Thank you so much for saying hi and for watching Channel 2. But it was a great day to just get outside. Yeah. And my goodness, it's a good thing it happened on Saturday and not Sunday. You know, you're talking about, like, kind of the craziness of, of the spring weather. Um, AJ is making his first communion at the end of the month. And when Connor did a few years ago, it was this, like, torrential downpour and so we have this big party planned everybody's coming in because he's you know the oh, youngest no. in the family so yeah. the last kind of hurrah right and I mean I'm already got the list going of the different saints I need to pray to because I mean you know please don't email me about their I, I get it it's weather but do you know are, what I'm was, saying are there saints you can pray to who my will, mom my mom will figure rain. that one out but do you know what I mean because like that was, we had to move everything inside last time so it was your mom didn't pray last time she did but apparently those went unanswered <laughs> no it was this weird like storm that came through and so we were all talking about it the other night because we have this big bash planned and uh, outside so I'm you know we're trying to come up with that contingency plan because end of April you don't know you always have to have the contingency plan. Yeah, and then they had the kids, the citywide triathlon is the same day, so we cannot have any rain that day. <laughs> Everybody start praying. <laughs> when you sign up for the triathlon at Houston, in Houston, one of the lines that you sign is bring your own kayak just in case. Just in case. You never know when you might need it, right? <laughs> I always wonder how people plan weddings too in Houston, right? Like an outdoor Don't make it out. Well, nobody's wedding? doing outdoor weddings here. We know better. Oh, some people do. No, I know. I'm kidding. I've it's been too to hot. some. Yeah. <laughs> I missed you over the weekend. I know. I really I'm have. sleepy today. And you know what? We have spent so much time traveling together. This is something. This has been a whirlwind. They don't know this about us. Sometimes people are shocked to find out that Courtney and I are actually friends in real life. Yeah. Not just uh, TV life. And we are actually friends. We, I, I mean, I like you. I love you. And I love you. You had to one-up me with the love, <laughs> didn't you? No, we actually really like each we other. We do. And there are times, even when we've teased each other on the show, who is that lady who wrote in a couple weeks ago and told oh, me... Oh, said that you were being mean to me That I was something? being so mean to yeah. you and, like, so offensive. I appreciate people wanting to be on Team Courtney. I do. But, I mean, it's it's all in good fun. That's when you sign up for this gig, you know. Like, you got to be able to laugh. Of course. And laugh we do and smile we do as well. So, folks, it's all in good fun. And, all you know, in good fun. 
I feel like when you tease someone, it really is a sign of love. Well, yeah, because you, know, you like care, right? Of... I think so. Yeah. I think teasing is fun. Life yeah. is short. Okay, so um, we're about to chat about some of the places that Courtney and I have been traveling to this year. Hard to believe. <sighs> We've really we have made really our way racked up the points around the we? world, and I'm glad that we got in um, some of our selfies because obviously we have to take a picture when we travel. Always, if it's not on social, it didn't happen. But now, oh, there we are. Oh, where is that? In Notre Dame. Oh, West Westminster, Westminster Abbey. Abbey. Oh, we had so much fun. Gosh, I barely remember that trip. You know. Oh. oh. And the Alamo. the Alamo, you know what? That was a good trip too. And I'm hoping, it's I'm so glad we, we got these we in. The same pose in it's each of those places. So it's so strange. I, oh. Oh, remember the Pentagon? The Pentagon, we were up in that helicopter leaning out the yeah. door to get this shot. That was good. And oh. the Taj Mahal. Oh, oh, man, that was, that was beautiful. Trip. But the reason why we're taking you through all our travel journeys today with all of these spots, apparently these are some of the spots, oh, oh strategically oh. placed selfie, I yeah. might Yeah, remember that was a difficult one to take. Statue of David over there in Florence, yeah, Italy. Yeah, that was difficult. We had to change the angles multiple times. But now, unfortunately, folks, it is actually not just frowned upon, but it is legit illegal, illegal. to take a selfie in so many of those places. It's crazy, right? I, who, thankfully, we got them all in without getting caught. I know. Just, just we live on the edge. Time. We, so a couple years ago, my mom and I, we went to Vatican City. Technically the smallest country in the world, right? Because right? it's its own thing. Yeah. Um, just there in Rome, but not technically in Italy, right? So we were in Vatican City, and I remember getting to the Sistine Chapel. I had never been to the Sistine Chapel. I thought it was going to be this, like, quiet, amazing... No, it's like bustling, right? There are so many people in there, but what's really disruptive, all these guards who are constantly yelling, no photo, no photo, and it kind of, um, How do they I don't know, ruins the mood. Oh, because people are always trying to sneak selfies yeah. and photos and all yeah. of that, and it's so hard with, with phones these days. But again, it's not just uh, frowned upon in some of these places. This list was posted on msn.com. Westminster Abbey, Sistine Chapel, the Alamo, Oceanfront Mumbai, the Pentagon, Taj Mahal, Statue of David, all these places now, right. I guess you can get arrested for taking a photo there. It's illegal. I, I'm fascinated. But again, thankfully on our whirlwind trip, we were able to do those I without anybody just, It's noticing. amazing how we can make it all the way to the Taj Mahal on the weekend <laughs> when we have to be back here, not at the mall, on Monday. <laughs> right? The there mall. Are some also I kind of miss the mall some days. <laughs> so do I. No, for my coffee or like a little shopping trip. You know? Remember last week on the show when you told our viewers how you failed your driving test multiple times? Why don't you tell them what happened that day at the mall? <laughs> <laughs> okay, You're I'll horrible. tell the story. You're horrible. So one day, oh, Courtney... Well, I wasn't the only one. <laughs> I get a phone call from Courtney. You Dude, <laughs> I totally jacked up my car. Totally jacked up the side. Pulling out of that lovely underground parking structure. That's too small. It's too <laughs> small. There's a really hard turn coming out of that parking garage. And uh, that's why you got to really swing, swing. Oh, I did a number. Maybe that wasn't part of your driving test, the wide swing. I, can you parallel park on the right and the left? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how, because some people can only parallel park on the right. I can do it on both sides. Okay. I lived in LA for a Yeah, month. that's true. I nailed the parallel parking part. Of my yeah, why are you asking? I don't know, because I'm celebrating my wins. <laughs> so imagine if there's like a giant concrete wall and you're driving. Well, most the people pole. might like. There was a pole too that kind of sticks out. <laughs> no, there's not. There was. I'll go back and Babe, show you. I did like 400 mall shows. I there. know you did. I know that I could drive through that and parking structure. I wasn't with the my only one closed. that did it. You remember all the marks? <laughs> the wall was like really straight. So anyway, I get this phone call, which is not totally abnormal for Courtney to call me, although usually it would be a text, text first, but it yeah. was a phone call. Dude, I totally just jacked up my car. What do you mean? Oh, I just drove it right into the wall. <laughs> Why would you do that? It was an accident. It must have been a rush to get back to Channel 2 because you love us here oh, so much. Wow, I forgot about that story.
Thanks for sharing it with everybody. It's a good one, isn't it? Is it is a good one. You know, back in the old building here, we had the same kind of pole in the back entrance. Did that to another car <laughs> The same kind of pole. Yeah. There wasn't a pole. There's one, it, there's like a little barrier in front because that's how I ripped the floor guard thing off my car. You hit a wall, babe. I hit a wall, but then there's this metal part that sticks out. You didn't see it. I'll go back and take a picture of it. I promise I you. I will go back and take a picture. There's a metal piece that sticks out, too. Maybe we should go back together tomorrow and do a live show oh. from the parking garage where you crashed into the wall. Yeah, it was like a scrape. It wasn't really a crash. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's like, it's not a broken arm. It's just a bruise. <laughs> I mean, usually you overplay things, but sometimes <laughs> when you downplay things, it's it just confusing. defies logic. <laughs> just a scratch? Could you even, like, open the passenger side oh, door? Oh, yeah, I know. It totally opened. It's totally fine. It opened fine. <sighs> Why do we do this to ourselves? Okay, let's talk about today's show. Let's talk about Easter. I have tears running down. <laughs> You gotta run some errands at that mall. Just watch out for stray poles that might jump out and hit your car. Uh, okay, Easter baskets, folks. We're talking about it because Easter is right around the corner. Who better to do the DIY is our expert friend, Sarah Terezinski. She is here with three super fun DIY Easter basket ideas. The kids are gonna love it. They are made, of course, her specialty, using upcycled materials you probably already have lying around the house. Plus, I am not gonna drive at all during this show. That's but good. if you want, to get in shape for summer without spending money on a gym membership personal trainer and friend of the show shane o'connor is going to share some at-home workouts no equipment required and this is great because you can do them uh super quickly yeah. too, even if you just have 10 minutes folks okay but before we get to all of that right after the break a candid conversation with kprc channel 2 meteorologist britta merwin well one of britta's sons is autistic and this is world autism awareness month she's helping other families by sharing what she's learned we're going to talk about her Parents' Guide to Autism when we return. It's the Frank's Forecast Weather app. Live radar, weather, hour by hour, 10 day forecasts, and more. Just search KPRC in your app store, only from KPRC Channel 2. Brought to you by Houston Advanced Nose and Sinus and Tri Eagle Energy. It's music's number one night, and you could be there. My fans, I love you guys. This is for you. Enter for a chance to win a trip with red carpet access to the Billboard Music Awards in Las Vegas. Watch Channel 2 News today for the keyword and enter for your chance to win. You wouldn't do that. So why do you do this? Um, yeah. Distracted driving kills an average of nine people and injures over a thousand every day in America. Put down your phone. Lives depend on it. Don't drive intoxicated. Don't drive intexticated. A sobering message from AAA. I dream to discover my superpowers. Where I mastered technology as young as three years old. Where there are no barriers to letting my imagination run free. I dream to create and program robots for the future using cutting edge technology in sixth grade. Where my talent is cultivated and conquers any limitation. where I am laser focused on my goals. And every step I take, I do it with determination and confidence. Single fibers attached to the curve. I dream when I graduate high school, I am college or career ready. And the sky is the limit. At HIZ, I am, I am, I am, I am a dream come true. For KPRC2 meteorologist Britta Merwin, autism is a very personal story. Last year, she revealed publicly that her son is on the spectrum. And since April is, of course, World Autism Awareness Month, Britta recently stepped away from her weather duties in an effort to increase understanding and also share resources to help parents. Welcome to the show. I'm excited to be here. It's my first time know, on Houston Life. Welcome to Houston Life. It's about time. Yeah. And 
when you decided to go public about your story, you really did so in an effort to help other people because this is something that affects so many families. Yes, and it's something that's very, very personal. So it was a decision that wasn't taken lightly. My husband and I thought about it for a really long time, and it, it's hard to open up about something that's so personal to you. And it took us a little bit of time. Um, my son had been diagnosed for over a year when we came out publicly about it. But the whole reason why I made the choice was because when I when I think about his life, you know, our goal is to make all of our kids have, you know, as easy of a time growing up into adulthood as, as they can so they can be successful and happy. And I just feel like the best way to do that is to help the world understand who he is. Mm -hmm. And if I want this world to be an accepting place that takes the time to soak him in and understand what autism is, the only way I can do that is by educating people about what it is to be on the spectrum. And take us back, Britta, to before your son was diagnosed. Where were you, not only as Britta Merwin, right, as mm -hmm. a, a public person, but a mom? a wife, I mean, where were you and your family and your husband at that time? Because I would imagine everything leading up to that diagnosis was very stressful. Yes, ex extremely stressful. So we're blessed that we had such an early diagnosis. So a lot of children are diagnosed somewhere between the age of three or four, he was actually two. And I really truly believe it's because we had another child. We had a child that we knew what the milestones were, and it was a comparison that made it very evident that our other child was not meeting the milestones at the correct time. And a, a big thing was we would say his name, and he wouldn't turn around. So normally you see a, a child playing and you say, oh, you know, Susie, Susie, and, and they turn around and they're excited to see you. And, and that wasn't the experience we had. It, it just, he would continue playing and he wouldn't respond to his name. And so you're noticing all these things that are different and then you start noticing that life is getting harder, things are more challenging for this child, and you're just searching for an answer of, of why. Why are things a challenge for my child? How can I make things easier? And once you have a diagnosis, you kind of feel like you have an answer mm -hmm. to what's going on. And the best advice I got was, you know, your child is the same person they were yesterday as they are today. Because mm -hmm. you, you get this diagnosis and you it's a whirlwind. It's a lot to take in. Right. You have a folder of information. You don't know where to start. It's very overwhelming. But to have somebody stop and say, this is the same kid as they were yesterday. And that helped you because yes. that puts it basically all in perspective. Yes, it does. These so. numbers, by the way, Britta, are, are pretty unbelievable. On average, the CDC estimates that about one in 59 children will be diagnosed on the spectrum. Interesting that it's one in 37 boys, one in 151 girls. So boys are four times as likely to be diagnosed. What do you make of that? I mean, it's tough because no, no one knows how, why you are autistic. They don't know what causes it. And so it, it is interesting that there's more boys than girls. And, and I think that, you know, although we don't have the answer to why that is, I think it's an important point to bring up so we don't forget the girls. Yeah. Right? Because the fact that, you know, I think the focus on autism tends to be the little kids, tends to be the young boys. So I think statistics like that are great to point out because it can allow you that opportunity to emphasize the girls emphasize the teens, the adults. There's a lot of adults living that had a really rough time growing up and they realize, wow, maybe I'm on the spectrum. Yeah. And then they see pieces like this, they see people sharing their story and they go and get tested and they realize that they're high functioning on the spectrum and it's life changing for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I just have to commend you on your bravery because it is, you know, it's like peeling the onion, going away and, and really getting to know you and what you and your family are dealing with and that can help so many people understand that you are a real person <laughs> <laughs> life isn't always rosy you know yeah. I mean you you have your own challenges and including that um, it's it's school it's therapy it's and it's a costly uh, road for many of these families to face what is an average sixty thousand dollars a year for yeah, children to raise a child on the spectrum so I mean the the cost is astronomical and you know, thankfully, a lot of these therapies are covered by medical insurance, but the coverage depends on your health insurance. Right. And can you imagine getting this diagnosis and a doctor's telling you your child needs 40 hours of this therapy that costs $100 an hour and you have no health insurance? 
or your health insurance doesn't cover enough. I mean, 40 hours a week is a lot. And on top of the financial burden, I mean, the time that you're putting into this therapy is immense. And as a parent, you kind of become a mini therapist yourself. It changes not only the child, but the entire family is working with right. that diagnosis. And our family has completely changed because of my son. And, and I like to think definitely for the better. Right. You know, I think he's got the best brother he could ever ask for. And um, it's strengthened my marriage with my husband. And I think that's made our family unit just very unique and very strong. But it's, it's challenging and it's a daily journey for and sure. For anyone out there who is maybe, you know, trying to figure out if their child is on the spectrum, I mean, this can be a very overwhelming diagnosis. You've created um, some resources that you've posted online in the health section of clicktohouston.com. Yes, and, and this is a parent guide that I worked on with Houston area moms. So I first came out publicly with our journey just by a quiet Facebook post. It was an open love letter to caregivers of somebody on the spectrum. I didn't advertise it, I just quietly put it on Facebook. And that sort of made the pathway to a whole piece that we put together last July. And Rachel McNeil helped me put that together, which is great. And, um, you know, because obviously we were very close as well as you are with her. And, and she sort of helped bring that voice because it is something that's so personal. And within that, we made the guide, and it's so comprehensive. It goes from education, not only public, but private. The difference between a educational and academic evaluation and a medical evaluation, because they're completely separate. And it covers the main health insurance coverage here in the Houston area. So you can link to how you can find the different therapies and what's appropriate for your child. It's, it's amazing the resources. And, and on top of it, I think one of the most important things on that guide is the local nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Here in Houston, not only are we blessed with the best medical community where your child can get therapies that they will not get anywhere else in the world, the level of therapy that they're gonna be able to have here, but we also have the most amazing community with nonprofits that are not only helping families financially, but they're helping them support wise, even just helping them find a babysitter. Right. Because if you can imagine, you know, you have a child that maybe elopes, which means that they have a tendency to run away. You're not going to leave your child with just anybody. Yeah. And any parent feels that way, but especially when your child has special needs. Absolutely. So it's, it's very cool what they're doing. Britta, thanks so much. You have mm -hmm. offered so much insight and great information. And thanks so much for, you know, being so brave to tell your story. We do appreciate it. Of course, and I appreciate that. Because, I mean, Courtney, you've known me since before yeah. diagnosis and after. So right. I appreciate it. And also, uh, we did mention that Parents' Guide to Autism that Britta put together is on the health section of clicktohouston.com. Britta Morwin, thanks again. We'll be right back. These days, travel can feel like you're in a battle scene. But at Hertz, we've rewritten the script with, spoiler alert, no suspense, no surprises, and definitely no shocks. When it comes to drama, let's leave that to the Avengers. Hertz, we're here to get you there. Marvel Studios Avengers Endgame, in theaters April 26th. It is said that the eyes are the windows into the soul, revealing character, heart, and charm, which begs the question, can a window have a soul? At Renewal by Anderson, we think so. When it's a window forged from fibrous, a composite material we created because the status quo wasn't good enough. When over 100 years of refined craftsmanship is fused with the precision of today's most advanced technology. The essence of who we are transforms into a superior, stunningly beautiful window. So yes, a window can have a soul. And it lives inside every Renewal by Anderson window for generations. For a limited time, take advantage of this great offer. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation and find out why we are the better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. 
Hungry for the best treats and eats in Texas? Come into DQ and enjoy both. Right now, try our special limited time deal. $3 Hunger Busters. Or go even bigger with a Belt Buster or Triple Buster. All served up hot and fresh. And don't forget to treat yourself with our scrumptious Oreo Cookie Jar Blizzard of the Month. When you're craving the best treats and eats in Texas, nobody tops DQ. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. Get excited, folks. <clears throat> Easter is almost here. Today we're learning how to create one-of-a-kind, budget-friendly alternatives to the usual Easter basket. So cute. Here to show us how to create these adorable baskets, we have upcycling expert Sarah Tarazinski. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, guys. Happy to be here. This is such a great time. I love Easter. I love all the decorations. Yes. And I was just thinking about this, too, about, ooh, I need to get ready the Easter baskets. But what a great alternative. Yeah, something different. You know, it's a great time of year. At our house, we don't... Uh, buy Easter baskets and the Easter Bunny doesn't bring them. We make the Easter basket and leave it for the Easter Bunny because it kind of teaches your kids a way to be a little resourceful. Yeah. So I've got a couple of ways here that you can use things from your own house to make some Easter baskets. Starting with an old lampshade and even if you don't have one of these you could grab this at a thrift store for like 50 you cents. You could. This is a lampshade off of another segment I did here on those lamps I did. That's leftover. I just oh, kept it. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. so what we did is I made this into a baby shark lampshade. Now we all know that that is huge right now with the little oh, yeah. ones. This is actually for my son Ben Wyatt and he's very excited oh. about this. So basically what you do is you take the lampshade and you can use old t-shirts, construction paper, whatever you want. Um, you can print things out online. You could actually print baby shark things out online. You take triangles. I basically just did a little mosaic on this one where I would put some of this Mod Podge. You can try it, Derek, if you want. Put a little on the lampshade, oh. just like that. And then you want to cover the whole place, the place you put um, where you're going to put the triangle, and then you place it over it. I can't believe I had never used Mod Podge I know, until I, I started this job. I use it it's way too much. <laughs> I swear I use it way too much. Um, and then you do a coat over that. Oh, over so it. So then what you, you just do your whole lampshade that way, and then you put a paper plate in the bottom, and then Ugh. Courtney, I, you know, you and I, the kid thing with the Easter grass. Yeah, I, no, I don't like the grass. Yeah, and then you just throw it away, right? right. Which is super wasteful. It's all over your so mouth So I always anyway. have pool noodles around my house. So you want to try cutting one of those? Oh, okay. So you can use the pool noodles to make your grass for your basket, and then the kids later can string it and make jewelry and stuff. Isn't that oh, fun? Yes. What a great idea. Yeah, it's so cute and fun, and you know those are really inexpensive. And yeah, they're at the dollar store too. All over the place. Yeah. And then you know you could put your little shark fin up here, and you could put your little teeth in here like we did here. It's all about just using this glue and oh. doing coats and layers. I mean, it's very, very simple. So the so Mod cute. Podge then is really what's, it's the glue. what's helping you yeah. put together the you whole thing. You just do layer after layer. You can do layers. I did a little bit of a layer on that to make it a little harder. Then you can stuff it with fish-inspired things. We've got goldfish, silly string, um, organic gummy stuff you can get at the grocery store so you're not in the aisle at Target buying $300 worth of stuff. Yeah, we've so, all been there. Yes, we've yeah. all been there. I so, think that's so such so a fun. cute idea. And it's, it's great too, having been around my nieces so much, when they do a craft project, it is amazing how they just focus, like laser sharp yes. focus. They really get into it. I've and they're vested, like right? Yeah, and they're they are. They and want then, it to be theirs. Yeah, and you could actually flip it upside down and use it as lampshade after if you really wanted. This is such a great idea cool. too, with the old suitcase the old that you want to throw I know. out. This but the, this is the Hogwarts. I actually got this one for a couple bucks at the thrift store. I was like, what can I do with that? So I wanted to make Harry Potter. Kids are really back into it. I don't yeah. know if there's a new movie coming out or what the deal, but a lot of my friends' kids are. So um, I found these old bandanas. You could do this with T-shirts. You could print things out online. I just put our fabulous Wonder Under on there. Okay. It's a little iron-on adhesive. You put it on the back and iron it right on the top. And then Look I iron some on the inside as well. These are just bandanas that got for a couple of bucks. And then you just take, you know, the grass, construction paper instead of real grass, some Easter eggs, put some owls on them, mm -hmm. Twizzlers, magic wands. You can do a little bit of jelly beans with the birdie um, bots, every flavor beans, you know, just all themed things. So the kids could make this, they leave could. it for the Easter Bunny, and then the Easter Bunny comes by and fills it up. Yes, and then you can use this as a trunk to put all your Harry Potter oh. dress-up stuff in. And speaking of Harry Potter stuff, you want to make these little photo props. You don't need to buy them. These were actually ones that I had that were purchased. But I printed all of these things out online and put a little bit of the Mod Podge on the back of them, and they get hard, and you could tape them onto a chopstick. So easy. Yeah, Very so fun. I, I love the pipe cleaner glasses. Yeah, and you can too. make little pipe cleaner glasses. It's so easy to do. You just make two circles and put them, uh, twist them together in the middle like this. Whoop. Twist them together. 
get a little. What a great idea! Yeah. And talk about just like that, and then you just twist them on fun. the ends. Yeah, it's Perfect. so easy. One size fits all. One size fits all. Okay, and every good party needs a good pinata. Yes, and I just saw these the other day at a store. I'm not going to say which one for 14 bucks for the same pinata. Okay. So this is tissue paper that was um, old gift bags. You know, what do you do with that tissue paper? Yeah. You can keep it. So what you want to do is you want to take a balloon, and now usually people use flour and water with this to make a paste. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to try to use Mod Podge <laughs> because <laughs> why not? Apparently, I'm a spokesperson for them. Um, so you, what you want to do is you want to take your paintbrush, Derek. You want to grab that yeah. little paintbrush right over there. Do you need this Mod Podge plate? We can use that one, or we can use this one right uh, here. Okay. So you want to take Courtney. You just want to okay. paint a little layer on there. On the paper yep, or on, on the, the balloon? Paper. Yep, on the balloon. And what, this is like tissue paper you it's have It's just here? tissue this paper. This is like a Harry Potter wand brush. I know, it kind of is. Way. I swiped that from my mom's art basket. Yeah. So then what you do is you just take a piece of this tissue paper right okay. here. And you just layer it on. And you just keep going and over you go, and yep, over you do and over. Two coats of that. And okay. then when you get done with those two coats, you let it dry. And then you come through, take a little bit of tissue paper and fringe it. And I just balled it up, dip it in your Mod Podge. Okay. Just one end side of it. And then just when this whole coat's dry, you stick it on there. And then oh, when the wow. whole thing dries, it's gonna... really hard, you take a pin and you stick it in here, and the balloon will go tss and like deflate, and then you could cut a little hole in the top, and then you can load it with all your Easter goodies. So this is like a paper mache yeah. sort of version. Yeah, right? I just didn't use because I didn't have flour at my house, and I always like to use what I have. I use the glue I had. So once the balloon is gone, it's still going to hold yeah, its shape it once holds. it's dried. Yep. That is so cool. If you, do, if you do two or three coats, it does. I love this. And this on the end is absolutely adorable. Yes. The brown sack basically transformed to the Easter Bunny. Yes, this is a lawn bag. And your kids are always into the surprise things. Surprise eggs. Everything's a surprise. So instead of going and buying a bunch of surprise things for five bucks a piece, you could take your lawn bag, you take your your um, little paper sack like this, and you just come right in here, and you cut. It's so simple, you guys. You just cut a V. I use these little bags as just a, easier to work with. And you just cut a little V. This and then, would even be great for school lunches. It too. would be like on East. Yeah, for sure. And then you open it up. What and then you take surprise. a little piece of twine and you can like crunch it together. Just okay. to, like make the little ears kind of peek out like this one. Yeah. And you Perfect. can pipe cleaner, Sarah, to yeah. fasten it at the top, but yep. you could really you tie could it use with twine, whatever. You could use twine, pipe cleaner. You can use, um, here, we'll give you a pipe cleaner, Courtney. You could Yarn. use. So cute. And you can use anything you have at home. Okay, Sarah, we got to leave it there, unfortunately. Yeah. We always love your ideas. So and as always, if you would like to connect with Sarah, you can just visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. These are great. Thanks. Thanks love all the ideas. Fun. Thanks, all right, guys, coming up, are you going credit card crazy, paying off, paying for everything with plastic? How you can cut down on using your credit cards and up your credit rate next on Houston Life. Ever look at your paycheck and think, there's got to be a better way? Well, here's some news. There is, and I can show it to you. I'm Paula Sage and star of a &E's hit TV show, Flip This House. My brother and I have taught thousands of people how to start making money in real estate. Now it's your turn. Next week, we're conducting a free two-hour educational workshop right here in the Houston area where you'll learn some of my secrets, like how to start flipping homes for profit in your spare time, using other people's money, and how to get started putting money in your pocket every month by investing in income properties. Real estate is a powerful tool that has made millions of people wealthy, but you can't start making your first dollar until you take your first step. Come to my free workshop and take advantage of this amazing opportunity. It can mean a lifetime of financial security. To get two free tickets to Paul's workshop, text your five-digit zip code to 54000. Seating is extremely limited, so text your five-digit zip code to 54000. Text in the next 10 minutes, and you'll also reserve a free copy of Paul's Money for Deals Guide. Just text your zip code to 54000. Oh, ridiculous work day. So many deadlines. Stress face. Me too. And traffic looks crazy. Grab dinner? Making it now. Ginger soy glazed pork tenderloin for me. Sun-dried tomato salmon for you. Big red heart. Making or ordering, LOL. Making. Guy and chef hat. Impressive. Crazy day, but you are still making dinner? Yup. Superhero guy. Great. There in 30. Ugh. Oh, maybe 40. When life gets crazy, keep it simple. Choose from hundreds of delicious chef-inspired meals in minutes with Meal Simple from H-E-B. Tonight and tomorrow, it's the final week of battle rounds. And with steals around every corner. Didn't see that coming. One coach will make a drastic choice. Bob. I don't think it works. The Voice, new tonight and tomorrow on NBC.
They're closing in on their greatest enemy. We're going to turn the tables on him, go on offense. To take him down, will they sacrifice an innocent life? One life to save countless more. Make a choice for the greater good. The Enemy Within, tonight on NBC. Welcome back to Houston Life, everyone. It's meteorologist Justin Stapleton. Boy, oh boy, yesterday, whole different ball game than what we're seeing out there today. Here's the low that brought in those showers, thunderstorms, and unfortunately some of that tornado and wind damage. That's now moving away from here. We're getting some cooler air on the backside of this, thankfully, and so that's what we'll be left with for the rest of this afternoon. So temperature-wise, it's not bad. Northwest flow is going to continue to dry us out. Notice that that's going to keep the temperatures generally in the mid to upper 70s, and I think that's where we'll sit. May get up to about 80 this afternoon, but as we get in towards the evening clear skies if you're going out to Minute Maid Park tonight for the Astros uh, Yankees in town for the next couple of nights should be nice nice cool start tomorrow morning we'll start off in the mid to low 60s and then quickly jump up into the upper 80s and in fact I think there's a couple of spots in here where we could be talking close to 90 degrees it's a dry heat but still 90s 90 at this point May 7th is what we usually average our first 90 so we'd be running above if we get to that otherwise though we've got great looking weather overnight lows in the 60s afternoon highs in the 80s until we get another storm system coming in on Saturday I I think that one could also bring a chance for some strong thunderstorms. We'll keep a watch on it throughout the rest of the week. But uh, Courtney and Derek, wouldn't you agree it's an excellent looking forecast? Oh, well done. <laughs> oh. Well done. <laughs> Oh, wow. He's here all week, folks. Justin, you inherited those dad jokes from me. I I'm glad. <laughs> glad we're on the same page there. Thanks for that forecast. All right, folks. comes to shopping, sometimes it's just so hard to say no to a good deal, but using your credit card way too much can have a negative effect on your credit score. Here to tell us a little bit more about high utilization rates and prevent us from damaging our credit is Private Wealth Advisor with Ameriprise Financial, Trevor Shakiba. Great to see you. Yeah, good to see you all. Okay, let's jump right into it. What exactly is credit card utilization? Yeah, I gotta admit, I, I, I learned something completely new here, and I gotta I got give credit to our excellent producers, Carlos, and in particular, Aaron, who sent me this article from the comparecards.com blog because I really wasn't familiar. So the first thing is, is what is a utilization yeah. rate? And so it's the comparison of your balance to your actual credit limit. So if you have $3,000 in credit card debt and your limit is 10,000, you would have a utilization rate of 30% and obviously the lower, the better. And when you say the lower the better, I mean the general rule of thumb is that once you get over that 30% mark, Trevor, that's where people really start to see their credit scores being affected. Just how, how much does this count on a credit score? It's significant. It's the second biggest factor in, in affecting your credit uh, rating. First is obviously your payment history. That makes sense. But um, when, I, when I looked into this, I didn't realize how much it can affect it and how quickly. And so Houston, unfortunately, has the fifth highest uh, credit card utilization rate, and we have approximately $5,500 on average per credit card in Houston. So we're not the worst, but we have right. lots of opportunity to improve. Okay, and there you go. How do we improve it? So the first thing is obviously you want to get that rate down, and the easiest way to do that is to pay down your balances. It goes without saying, right? Um, so they do, they do want you to keep it under 30%. That's what the experts say. I recommend trying to keep it at zero, obviously, right? Um, but do anything and everything to, to get those credit cards down to zero. Because remember, what we're always talking about here is building wealth, achieving your financial goals like retirement and education planning. The biggest impediment to building wealth is high interest debt, in particular credit card debt. Yeah, and now, I mean, it seems like with so many credit card companies, there are these online tools. You can click and see if you only pay the minimum, a balance, instead of How taking long? a year to pay off, it can take like 30 years to pay yeah. off, right? So pay more than the minimum every single month. Pay more than the minimum and think outside the box. I mean, I've seen people that have sold stuff that you don't need. Every dollar counts to really pay down those balances. Um, okay, so another point is, which is kind of interesting, just looking at it, says, Increase your credit line. Yeah. I, at first, when I read that, I thought, do I really want to say this? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, it comes down to math. And so it makes sense. So in my example previously, if you had a $10,000 credit card limit or, or debt limit, if you increase that to 12, then your utilization rate went down to 25%. What I found interesting is, is that 65 per, or 64% of cardholders that asked actually received an increase 
and the average increase was more than 2,000. But here's the point. Um, if you do that, don't just increase your debt, debt limit don't and follow spending. that. Right. Yeah, and you're, it, you're, you're uh, increasing it to work those numbers. Exactly. Okay. And Trevor, your last point is that sometimes adding another car to your wallet could yeah. help? Well, this one really had the, the bells and the alarms <laughs> going off because I didn't want to say this at all. But again, it just comes down to mass. So if you get another card and you've got lower balances overall on m all of those cards, then of course your rate comes down. The other interesting thing here that you could take advantage of is the 0% introductory offers. So you're playing a little game, mm -hmm. but again, if you're trying to get your rating up, that's a really easy thing to do, those two. But of course, point three is the most important pay those cards down, right? Really try to pay down that debt um, and then put it, put that money to work elsewhere. Pay down the debt and stop spending. Trevor, it's always great to see you. Great and as always, you. if you all would like more information on financial planning, or if you'd like to schedule your own complimentary initial consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, you can call 281-724-9917 or visit them online at theshakibagroup.com. After the break, Beach Body, here we come. The most effective workout moves you can do at home without any equipment. We'll be right back. The Sheik reinvented, ridiculously soft, Sheik's Performance Sheets, delivering the ultimate deep sleep experience. As an elite athlete, the most important part to performance is a great night's sleep. We thought if technical fabrics can improve athletic performance, why can't we apply that same concept to sheets? Sheik stretches to your every curve. It conforms to you and the softness is unbelievable. Traditional cotton sheets trap heat and moisture, making you too hot or too cold. But Sheik's groundbreaking sleep tech fabrics transfer heat two times more effectively and breathe nearly 50% better, allowing your body to stay at its ideal sleeping temperature. And Sheik's moisture wicking technology releases the natural moisture your body creates while you sleep, so you stay dry and sleep better. Moisture wicking is important because we get warm at night. You sweat a little bit every single night, and Sheik's will help keep you cool. Sheiks are wrinkle-free and have stay-fit corners, which provide an extra secure fit and grip. Best of all, Sheiks feel ridiculously soft. If you think about that soft fabric touching your skin for eight hours a night, you're going to get a good night's sleep. Every time you climb into bed, you'll experience the Sheik sensation. They're so much softer than any other sheet I've ever had. The reviews have been remarkable. Sheiks are transforming the quality of sleep. Sheiks feel so good, I don't want to get out of bed. I love Sheiks. Sheiks are patented and the only authentic performance sheets. Call or go to trysheiks.com now to sleep better every night. Order your Sheiks performance sheet set in your choice of size and color. For a limited time, you'll get 25% off when you use the promo code on your screen, plus two additional pillowcases at no cost. That's a total savings of up to $100. Act now to get free shipping. Sleep on Sheiks for 30 nights, and if you're not satisfied, we'll give you a full refund. There's no risk. Call or go online now and see how Sheiks deliver the ultimate deep sleep experience. You know, you don't need a gym membership to start working on that summer beach bod. Of course not. Just suck it in. <gasps> yeah, Just thanks. kidding, folks. Shane O'Connor, personal trainer and team development manager at Lifetime Cyprus, recently stopped by to show us some exercises we can do at home without using any equipment. Shane, we always love when you come by because you teach us these great exercises that we can do at home, no special equipment required. Or gym clothes. Or gym <laughs> clothes, clearly. <laughs> Just take off your shoes and join us. Okay, so these are specific workouts at home. What are you going to show us today? So we're going to do total body across the board. We're going to focus on upper, lower, and core. So we're going to use an overhead squat, a lateral uh, slide. We're going to do a ab, which is a push-up with a lateral slide with it. And then the last one will be a full push-up into a what they call a pike. And this is stuff that we can obviously do at home. Mm -hmm. And you say that's super easy, using body weight. And it's going to be... One of these schedules that like, or workouts that you're saying, schedule it in, Make keep yourself accountable. Absolutely, so really quick is that we do wanna start with body weight, why? We never wanna add uh, fitness on top of dysfunction. So if we can move well with our body weight, then we can add load. We don't wanna add load or weights if we can't move well with our own body that we have. So aside from scheduling it in, you absolutely do. Create SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, right? Celebrate the small wins because small wins lead to big wins, okay? And remember, it's 80-20 rule, which means we still have to enjoy our lives and right. you know time we spend with family members. So if we're complying or on par 80% of the time, 
enjoy that 20% of the time. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable ratio, right? Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to start with these exercises. Yes. And is this one complete workout? Like, you know, should it be 30 minutes? Should it be 20 minutes? Should it be 10? How long do you think? So movement is always going to benefit this period. So if you only have 20 minutes, we make it 20 minutes. If okay. you have 30, 30 is great. So yes, you can do all these exercises as one major circuit. Anywhere from two to four rounds, anywhere from 12 to 20 reps of each. And depending on your repetitions, you want to be somewhere between 30 and 90 seconds total in your rest between your circuits. Well, and honestly, every time you come on the show, Shane, even if we are only working out together with you for like five minutes, we can feel it after just that totally. short amount of time. Yeah. So even if you have a little bit of time at home, get off the couch, join us. It'll be fun. Okay, first one, overhead squats, one of my favorites. Yeah, so what we're going to do is set those feet shoulder width apart, toes out about 20 degrees. We're going to raise those arms straight up. What we're gonna do is push from our hip back first and then push our knees out and drop right in the bucket. Keep that chest up as best you can, come right back up. Good, just like that, we're gonna go five more. Down and then up, good. And how low should we be shooting to go? We want the top of your thigh to be parallel with your knee. And remember, if you're at home and this is getting too easy, start to tempo it, which means you can go two seconds down, two second hold, and then two seconds up. Very nice, two more. All right. Good. You feel it, Courtney? Oh, yeah. You guys are fast learners. This is great. <laughs> this Last is good. one. Uh, Hop right up. Great. Give each other a high five. Nice job. Nice job. Good so, you guys are going to grab these towels for the next one. Okay. Why? Because you can use your dish towels to do a workout, believe it or not. Oh. So, what we're going to do is drop this one out on the floor. We're going to put our right foot on it to start. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to push our hip back as we slide that leg out. So, we're going to push back. Slide that heel out, oh, and then we're well, going to pull clever. it in and come all the way to standing oh. position. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't get back up. So okay. only go in a comfortable range of motion. Don't overextend yourself. And then dig that foot in the ground and pull it back in. Good. We're going to go one more and then flip to the other side. On the Very leg nice. that's not wow. extending, we should try to keep. Yes, you want to work to keep it neutral. Right? Okay. So that knee and ankle should be staying in line. Oh, wow. Heel touch first and oh, then yeah. pull. Good. Let's switch sides real that's quick. A that's a nice one. stretch, too. Yes. That's a good inner thigh, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Why we do stuff like this is because of today's day and age. We're driving all the time in Houston. We're seated Sitting. at work. So we need to use different planes of motion or movements to work those weak muscles. Good. One more. And relax. Perfect. Nice job. Nice. So next one we're going to do, okay, we're going to hop down on the floor here. What we're going to do is we're going to go into that push-up plank position first, but I want that towel on your right foot. Okay. Okay, give each other some space so you don't hit each other with your leg. Now, what we're going to do is come up into that push-up position, hips and shoulders even, and then what you're going to do is slide that foot up and out to the side and then oh. pull it back in. Oh, whoa. Very nice, good. We're going to do four there and then switch. You guys got it, good. This is harder than this it looks for so sure. Hard. This is the hardest one so far. Very good. And how far up should our leg be coming? As far as it can. Oh, dear. Good. And switch sides. We're going to go two on the Woo! other side just so everybody can see what the other side looks like. Okay. It's burning. Yes, Got it. it is. Good. And you want to maintain the rest of the body, right? You don't yes. Want you want to be like a piece of stone as you move Woo! that one leg. So Good. Stay relax. Plank. Good. You can stay down there, right? Last one we're going to do. So this is the hardest one of the day. Wow. Okay. Okay. But we're going to do well at it. So first thing we're going to do is open that towel up, put both feet on there. Okay, we're gonna come into a modified push-up position. So our knees are gonna be on the ground, hips are slightly forward. What we're gonna do is pull ourselves into the ground. We're gonna push up. Okay. Then we're gonna come back to that top of that push-up position. And then we're gonna hike our butt up towards the ceiling and pull those feet in. Oh, wow. And then oh, back out. Very nice. And then drop the knees back down. We're gonna do one more and that's it. Push up. Mm -hmm. Straight up. up. And then pull in. Very nice wow. job. And that's your workout at home. Woo! Oh my gosh. Way to go. Oh my gosh. Shane. That's a good one. Well, Very thank nice you so job. much. Yeah, that was really good. I felt a cramp coming on at one point, but You're good, honey. I just pushed through it. Yeah, you did. That was great. Seriously, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We this love having awesome. you down. And as always, if you want to connect with Shane, you can check out the scene on Houston Life section of our website. All right, there's much more Houston Life right after the break. Stay with us. Nice job. Next ET from Las Vegas, Sin City goes country. It's going to be, you know, a crapshoot. <laughs> I've lost a lot of money. With Luke, Carrie, Miranda, Marin, and more. ET in Vegas. Tonight at 630 on Channel 2. If your bath needs a remodel, Bath Fitter can give you a beautiful, custom-made tub with seamless walls that's built to last. We guarantee it. Because at Bath Fitter, we use only the highest quality premium materials in a wide range of styles and patterns. So you can design a tub you'll love. 
with installation in as little as one day with no demolition. Now that's something to smile about. Call now to book your free in-home consultation or visit bathfitter.com today. Tired of the winter blues? Need a break from your daily grind? Ready to press pause and make time for you? Escape to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina and let the calming surf, soft sand and warm sun do the work. With amazing deals all along the coast, it's the perfect time for a seaside getaway. So make time for you. Visit Myrtle Beach, where happiness comes in waves. Every time you visit the Houston Zoo, you see animals and help save them in the wild. When you see elephants splashing, you save elephants roaming the rainforests of Borneo. See gorillas lounging in the meadow and save them in Rwanda. See the sea turtles swimming and save sea turtles along the Texas coast. Come see the animals at the Houston Zoo and save them around the world. The Houston Zoo. See them. Save them. A Texas civilian who fought against ISIS. Like I went by Azad, whenever I was there, that was my name. Ignoring all government warnings. Most of the bullet hit the back of my leg. What's happening there is like something everybody in America should care about. The one-on-one -on -one, tonight on Channel 2. Are you suffering from spring sinus issues? Tried every medicine and technique with no relief? Well, there is a procedure called a balloon sinuplasty that's providing a solution to many Houstonians. Dr. Robert Palmer from the American Sinus Institute stopped by this past fall to show us how it works. Dr. Robert Palmer with American Sinus Institute joins us and welcome. I know so many people right now are dealing, you know, could be, oh, maybe this is an allergy. It's going to come and go. And then all of a sudden, 20 years pass by. Clearly, it's not an allergy, right? Well, it, it probably is an allergy that caused it. Right. I mean, you think about it. What do allergies do? They cause nasal congestion. And if you have that recurring over and over again, it blocks your sinuses. And when your sinuses get blocked, you end up retaining fluid and getting infections. So, you know, you got to figure out where the horse and the cart are, but usually allergies are some type of problem with your nose, vasomotor rhinitis, attributes to having recurring sinus infections. And everything really is linked. I mean, people oftentimes think of allergy season as only being in the spring, right. but in the fall, our ragweed numbers are high, the mold spores are out, so you're seeing a lot of people coming through the door with a lot of these bad symptoms. Well, it's, it's about numbers, antigen numbers that causes your allergies, but think about it, 12 months out of the year in the Houston area, we have something yeah. in there that's causing problems. The fall is bad because of ragweed, but then in the summer when it's very humid, you have molds. Mm -hmm. So there's always something in the, in the air that bothers people, and it just depends on what you're sensitive to. And maybe for some people, there's just no relief out of those 12 months, as we said, too. And I think what's really important about your resume, too, is that you're also a head and neck surgeon, board certified. So mm -hmm. when you think about all of these other issues that are going on, sinus, migraines, maybe neck issues, all of that kind of ties in together, it, right? It, it can. It sure can. And, uh, and the beauty about what we're doing with this procedure, it's not surgery. We're reestablishing ventilation of the sinus that have to have it because it's about barometric pressure. The pressure inside your sinus has to be the same as it is in the, the room you're in. And if you're congested and you block those sinuses, that's why people get into trouble. Mm -hmm. So with Dr. Rubio's technique, not only do we reestablish ventilation, we make sure we reduce the load in the nose so that you can breathe. And if you breathe and ventilate, you're in great shape. Sorry to jump in, but we are seeing that technique right now. Describe to us, Dr. Palmer, exactly how this process works and what we're seeing. Well, we take the patient, we put the patient to sleep because it's much easier on them. There's little openings where you can see where that balloon is on that mm -hmm. diagram right there. It's up high in the maxillary sinus. We thread that in and open it up and make a one millimeter opening, five millimeters. So now it ventilates. What's, re what's really important, just to the right of that balloon, is the inside of the nose with the turbinates. Those turbinates in some people are so large, the sinuses can't vent. And when they can't vent, they retain fluid and cause headaches and pressure. So we address both issues, and that's why this procedure works so well. And what kind of recovery time could someone expect? Because this procedure, the animation that we just saw, that's minimally invasive. Invasive, exactly. We, we do, the, do the patients with them asleep, but they go home that day and they go home without their nose packed. So if they have a job that requires desk work and they want to go back the next day, they can. 
I usually encourage them to take two or three days off because I want them to sleep elevated. But as long as they can go back to a job that's behind a desk or something, they can go back almost immediately. I'm sure we piqued so many people's interest by this, but who would be the best candidate? I know that you know you have to see every patient, but how do we figure out who's the candidate? Well, the history is the most important. If you're a patient that at least six months out of the year, you're constantly complaining of nasal congestion, you're bothered by changes in the antigen level and causes that you can't breathe, and you have mid-facial or frontal pain, you're a perfect candidate for this. Now, do, are you having infections during that time? Probably, but that's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is ventilation and nasal congestion. That's what this procedure helps. And in doing so, it helps people that have recurrent sinusitis. And it's not just a, the quality of life for the patient, but also your spouse. I mean, if they're constantly congested or snoring, coughing, snoring and coughing, I mean, that's disruptive to everyone in the house. Exactly. When you can't breathe through your nose and you're sleeping at night, what do you do? Mouth. Yeah. Open your mouth. And when you breathe through your mouth, what do you do? Yes, you yeah. Soft palate vibrates. So that's not a freight chain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Someone snoring. Someone okay, snoring. let's put your info up on the screen, Dr. Palmer, because uh, folks out there, if you would like to schedule your appointment or even get more info, you can call 713-BALLOON, which is 713-225-5666, or check out their website, americansinus.com. And again, if you're experiencing these symptoms, you're not alone, but the good news is, there is something time. can be done about it. Exactly. Great to see exactly. you. Thanks Great for to coming. see you all. Appreciate it. When you apply for Social Security Disability Benefits, you have to fill out a lot of paperwork. You may get frustrated and need somebody to help you. I'm Victor McCreese, a Texas Board Certified Attorney. If you need to apply for disability benefits or appeal a denial, my law firm is here to help you get started, either in person or over the phone. You have a Espanol. Call Victor McCreese, toll free, 1-866-526-9966. Why wait to get Medicare coverage if you don't have to? Cigna Health Spring is here for you right now. If you're turning 65 or have low income or recently lost coverage, you may be able to get a Medicare Advantage plan from Cigna Health Spring. Call 1 866 606 7599 to learn more. There's no obligation. We offer plans with no monthly premiums and no primary doctor copays to help limit out of pocket costs. You can also get medical, dental, and prescription drug coverage all in one plan. With Cigna HealthSpring, you get more coverage at a low cost, plus a team to help guide you toward better health. Don't go another day without finding the coverage that's right for you. Call Cigna HealthSpring today at 1 866 606 7599. That's 1 866 606 7599. Cigna HealthSpring, together all the way. Yep. All right. Hey, honey, I'm just going to go to the den real quick to get my laptop. I'll be right back. Wow, that's a serious foundation problem. I'm sure the Olshan man has a solution. We can help. With over 80 years of experience, Olshan can assess the problem and find the right solution. Go to OlshanFoundation.com for a free estimate. When it comes to solving foundation problems, there's only Olshan. I gotta tell you, Derek, you got the right idea. Oh my gosh. You know, we've had so much fun today, but I need a nap. Me too. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy Monday. Call my mom. Goodbye.